Hi, and welcome to the Spencer Lodge podcast. Today I am interviewing, well, I'm not really interviewing, I think I'm being put under some kind of punishment or some kind of experience being made to do something that I don't want to do. Okay, but I'm spending the afternoon with Farhad Azizi from Azizi Developments, and we're going skydiving. That's what we're doing today. And the reason that we're doing it is that it was a chance for me to get to know Farhad a bit better, but also for you to get to know the CEO of a big organization that typically you would sometimes feel that it wasn't so accessible and realize what kind of person he is and what kind of life he lives and how he approaches his life. And I think you're going to enjoy this one. So uh, why don't we cue the music and get stuck in? Why are we sat at Skydive Dubai on a Thursday afternoon at three o'clock? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I would pick this any day over day-to-day -day work. Are you an adrenaline junkie? I'm not, but I like this. This is something I've never done. So I'm very curious and I, uh, I'm pretty fascinated on how crowded it is here. There's yeah. so many people wanting to participate in this because I was under the impression it will be quite empty and we're just going to hop on. <laughs> and not many people would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see the whole crowd is pretty impressive. So skydiving for you is something you've not done before. Like you were telling me earlier on when we were chatting that you did the bull run in Pamplona. Yes, I did that. What? that, that was... <laughs> you are an adrenaline junkie. Well, I, I did it. It was my brother's idea and I really liked it and, and I was I'm very happy I, I've done it although it's, it's it's quite risky I think it's probably more <laughs> there's more risk involved in this because the the, the bulls you you don't have any safety or anything on and you have to just uh, people get hurt yeah people get hurt really bad and uh, once you do the, the whole run then you get into this arena and they close the doors of the arena and all these 10 or 12 bulls are in and and if you it's a locked area it's i locked. thought it was a street no it's a street the street ends into an arena ah uh, they go up the street and then in the, the arena the, 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 the street is probably two kilometers run or three and then you get into an arena with all the bulls inside and the bulls just run after you so how many bulls tell me it's eight to twelve bulls and the bulls change so there's there's a couple of bulls they get tired they get a break but the people inside they don't get break how many people <laughs> are inside though it's like two, three hundred. Two, three hundred are inside bulls. into the arena, and the bulls are are, are basically there's, there's there's quite a bit of bulls and, and too many people, so it's it, there's one or two that get hurt quite a bit, but 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 there are people that help you with, with things. Like what? It's, they had to teach you how to run faster. No, not really. Like 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 there's some that there's, there's, some, there's some that have a little bit more experience. This isn't the place to hide. So you, so some people would try would get too scared and they would jump on the fence, and then there are people with whips. They'll, they'll whip you away. Whip the people away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the bulls? Yes, yes. And my brother was with me. He got he got whipped on, on his finger and he was bleeding. It's a it's a very hardcore, natural experience. It's no, no, no joking. So are you into kind of like fast cars and fast paced things? I love cars. Not necessarily fast. And all the but all kind of cars. I love cars. I, I love anything with a motor inside it. What so kind of car do you drive? It varies. That's another problem I have. My car changes all the time. Like I you get I, bored. I, had, I had I, I, I get a bit bored and I get I get too uh, carried away with getting a new car with the new technology and all that. So I've I've had almost I had many types of cars and I, and I and I I lost quite a bit of money on them. But selling them back is very difficult. Especially you with some always, of these, you always lose money on cars. I though. know. It's just that, and, and it's every it's, time I used to do it, I'd go back into the car dealership and I'd be like, "Yeah, I've had it for like six months," and you know, thinking I might have lost a few percent. And then it's it's easily <laughs> twenty thirty percent. Yeah. Yes, and especially those like if it's if it's a very special car, then you lose even more. So I, I like cars, but now I'm a bit more careful. My my wife has uh, limits now. She says, "You know, you can't do this." You can change your car every two years or every three, but not so often. But I love fast, fast cars. So, so, who's the boss at home then? Is your wife the boss at home? Well, we, it depends, right? Depends on what it is. So there's a lot of things she's the boss, there's a lot of things I am, but, but we, we have a very good mutual respect. We have two kids, so we do a lot of things for the kids now. Yeah. I have a boy and a girl. And when it comes to our plans in life, it's always the kids now. The type of car we get, the holidays we get, 
or the furniture we buy or anything we do it's all about the kids and, and the kids are young so we really can't you know like even today I didn't tell her that I'm coming on this because she might cancel it on me <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so when it comes to safety, I have to be, she's the boss when it comes to safety, obviously. Uh, I think this is a very safe activity, but, but, you didn't tell but I didn't tell her, I didn't tell her. <laughs> Just like I, I was very excited about doing a motorcycle uh, license and all that. Uh, uh, I, I would go practice, I got my license and I told her I, I have the license and she was, she was uh, surprised, but she didn't let me get a motorcycle. You, she, she said, you, you got the license, but you cannot ride. You're joking. That's yeah. exactly what happened to me. Really? <laughs> I, I went to the UK, I did a crash course for a week, got my motorbike license, came back, ready to buy a motorbike. Yeah. And my wife was like, what you, no. no well, yeah, you can't read this. I'm like, yeah, but got a Friday morning early, there's a group of guys that ride. Yeah, I tried that, it didn't work. She, so she eventually she said, you can get one of those tri, uh, what do you call it, tri tricycles? The, yeah. yeah, tricycles, but I didn't want to get those. those I'd rather get a bicycle there. Yeah. So. So, so you wouldn't let, so, and were you going to yeah, get like a Harley or like a, a fast bike? Or well, something? Harley, well, I was I was thinking of a Harley, a big one, not a very crazy loud one, but I was open to anything actually. I, I was told for your first one, you have to be a bit careful, get a lighter one and all that, and then as you get experience and all that. But all those uh, dreams are vanished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are. Uh, they, there's, it's, what, it's, kind, what kind of life do you live then? Because obviously you're, you're the the boss of a big company and you're a successful guy from a successful family too and a lot of people would be forgiven for imagining that you lead, led a very privileged life and when I look at my wife I think she led a privileged life as well and then I think about my kids and I just wanted to ask you about your kids do you do you want them to grow up understanding importantly the value of exactly. money the value of ethics do you find it hard to teach them because you've been lucky yourself or do you think that you've got a uh, either a hard and fast set of rules around the kids or how, how do you bring them up i, I think i think it, it's, it's I, we, we live a, we live a good life obviously but it's a it's a very simple life as well and we we have made it even more simpler for when, when we start to have kids because you you cannot have kids who are raised in an environment where things are too simple and easy and they're they're all spoiled with with a lot of these uh, facilities of life you know we do, Dubai is a great city and has it makes it even easier right so with the driver and the housemaid and nannies and so many so many of those things it, it could be really challenging for them if they have problems later on in life and they and they wouldn't stand on their two feet so that's that's one of our biggest worries as, 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 as parents um, and uh, I, I, I see that uh, my my parents uh, we were seven siblings my parents always also were very careful when it came to, especially my mom she didn't want us to be all very you know spoiled with money and this and that. so if my dad could could afford that nice you know, bicycle we didn't we we're not we we're not spoiled with those things or a nice car or a nice um so you were taught know. the value so so when i so yeah very much so when i was in the university in, in back in the states I, I i lived in the dorm um, I, I wanted to live in a nice apartment outside the university and have this and have that, but he said, no, no, I, you can't. So, so, so the, the value of, of money was, was, a, was, it was it's always been a big topic in our house. Uh, it's kind of always easy to want to give your kids the best things, isn't it? It's easy to want to provide nice things, nice yeah, experiences and, and everything, and but there has to be that balance. The balance is very important. I, I, I have seen other families who who struggle who's struggling a lot because the, the kids are too spoiled they go they go to college for example they're on their own and they have a little problem and they, they cry about it it's 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 you, you see that that it's it's all because they were too pampered and the parents cannot be there for them all the time especially when parents age they really cannot take care of a 30 year old man anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. I find it interesting looking, you know, because I have this comparison. I come from a working class background. You know, my, my dad went bankrupt when I was seven years old. Okay. So he'd worked hard to achieve something. Then my dad went bust. And then from going bust, he had to start again and start build. Again, yeah. and, and at seven years old, uh, I was starting to work out what was going on. And as I went in kind of like my early part of my teens, he was, he was still on the building phase. When I met my wife, Anna, she just had a very privileged life. She's never had a job interview. She's always worked for dad's company, been sent around the world and learned different languages at the different offices around the world and always had whatever she wanted. I remember when I was a kid, saving up and buying my first pair of sneakers. 
my Nike Air Max. And I think there was something like back then, it, 30 or 40 pounds. But back then, that was a lot of money to yeah. me. And I remember saving up the money. I had a job on a Saturday morning on a market stall. I, I, I cut people's lawns, I washed people's cars, I delivered newspapers in the mornings and saved up that money and I bought them. Yeah. And I remember leaving the shop with them in the box. And like very happy to have those oh man it was amazing and i remember i took them that i kept that box for ages and, and i always put them back i had a toothbrush to clean them with i always put them back in the box and so i know what it's like to have to save yeah. and and value something because i had to do it myself i mean this is back in the 80s you know i i i have a friend in germany she she tells me that she's so worried that her kids would not have dreams to do that like to get to to, pair, to to save money and buy a sneaker or to save money and do something and she says everything that my kids need and i and i provide them then what are they going to look out for what are they what is what is that they're going to look out for maybe you know maybe an experience but then there's so many things that you that that if, if money keeps on buying it then then then, then you sort of could, could reach to a point where you are sort of lonely and isolated and depressed maybe and and it's, it's very important to as, as a parent to know the, the, the kids are too young to to, to yeah. realize this so, so, so the parents who think that they're very generous with their kids <laughs> are not necessarily doing them any favors doing, no they're yeah, not yeah, doing yeah. A lot, too many favors I, I think they, they're not forecasting on how bad it could get so whether it was myself or my other siblings my my, my two sisters, for example, one of them is a dentist, the other is a medical doctor. They both work yeah. and, and they have like lengthy work hours, 12 hours at a hospital in London. One of my sisters, she's in London in the emergency and she has... All the doctors work long hours she, there. She so works yeah. for the H, uh, NHS and, 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 and the working hours are, are pretty tough. Mm. So just like all everybody else, she's doing the same thing. And, and I, I every time I see her, doing that and, and, and working so hard to be successful in her career and that makes me very proud that she's not spoiled with it's not, she's not doing it for the money she's doing it like you know she wants to be something she's got purpose she, yes, she? yes, passion, yeah. she, yes exactly tell me what do you when you think about Dubai is Dubai good for kids very much so I mean I, I, I think Dubai is definitely one of the best places to raise family uh, to, to have kids why is that there's, there's too, too many the, the list is very long but but the the biggest I'll put at the top is safety, safety number one. The uh, the variety of school. My my kids go to the Swiss International. Mm -hmm. they, they they learn German and English simultaneously. They could go to German school or French school or, or British school or American school. So that 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 the education is good, safety is good, and then there's a lot of there's it makes it very how do I say? There's a lot of things restricted, which are good. And kids don't need to have that access to it. So the list goes on of how many things are restricted. I'd rather have my kids not have the access to it. So it's, res it's restricted as a whole for the whole community. And I think that helps the kids when, in, the, in that form. I think that living in Dubai for kids going back 15 years, the only communities I ever used to see were kind of like a compound community. Yeah. Other than that, it was like freestanding houses in the whole kind of Umsakeen, Jumeirah area with yeah. big walls around. Them, yes. Which doesn't... That has doesn't, changed a lot. I know, I know it's it has changed, changed yes. yeah. Now and it's communities everywhere. Now it is communities, yes. yeah. People, people live in communities, the kids ride the bike up the street and the yes. kids play at the communal swimming yes, pool. Yes, yes, they're that gated kind of, and yeah, safe. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And I think that, that creates... A good social environment. Uh, yeah. Because that's something that's been missing in Dubai for a while. It's still not as robust because you have such a huge population of of so many experts from so many different nationalities. And for people, it takes time to get to know the whole dif of somebody with a, with a different language. And culture and stuff. Culture yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, so you end up t tending to, to, to hook around your, your own uh, t type of people and all that. So that's been something that, 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 that a lot of people had complained in the past. That, okay, you know, lifestyle in Dubai could be a bit... Uh, so is it with those communities that exist when you think about your uh, like a, a day in the life for you park, park work for a minute here mm -hmm. you're a dad you've got two kids are you the guy that goes home grabs the kids gets involved yeah, and so very does much. traditional dad stuff so i leave at work sharp at six you leave on the dot at 6 p.m at the end of the 6 day 6 p.m 5 30 6 p.m if i have if i have work at days maybe once a week i stay a bit late yeah but the rest of the days i leave early i uh, I, I i go home and then I let the kids decide. So, so they want to go to the playground. I take them. 
um, put very comfortable clothes on so I can run with them, you know, wrestle with them or, 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 or you know, take the bicycle, go out. So it's, the weather is very good now. So we do a lot of outside activities mm -hmm. in summer, then we do a lot of indoor activities. But in, in, this, in this type of environment, we're outside. I, I live in a community where there's a lot of green area. So we, we just run around and play football. Do you cook? Not much. I'd love to learn how to cook. But I, <laughs> I, I've been reading books about it. And I want to take a class. So my, my daughter is only six and a half. And she, she's interested. I'm interested. She wants to participate there's a in the class. There's places you can go here where you can go as a family and learn to cook yes, as a family. Yes, yes, yes. And spend the evening and have a chef teach you. Yeah. And I've done that before with my family. Okay. And it's fabulous because you'll get, you'll get instructions. You know, you've got the chef teaching you. But you're all doing it together and getting stuck I, in. I, I, I think that's a very good activity. But I'm, I, I, I haven't had a chance to do it. Um, and do you read the bedtime stories? I do. Yeah. I do. I do. I, I've been reading a lot of riddles now. My, <laughs> my, my, my daughter wants to, to hear the riddles and my son, he wants to listen to certain music and then he falls asleep. So, so it's, we switch roles. Sometimes my wife takes the, the, the son, the three-year-old, and I take the, the, my daughter. What, Mina. You, what are your kids' names? Mina is my daughter and Aryan, my son. And so who's more like you? I think, I think they're both, but I, I think my son is more like me. Uh, he's he's only you three, but he, hope, you're hoping, aren't you? No, I'm not hoping. He's he's very much my my daughter is very much like my wife. Okay. Uh, but she's very close to me, and my son, the way the way he, he he's very how do I say he's 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 not as he's quieter and and patient. I I think I'm very patient, and he he's quite patient. He's very patient, very calm. He doesn't he listens. Uh, and my, my, my other kid, she, she, she's, uh, she's more like, she wants to lead things. She doesn't care what you want. She does what she thinks is right. And, and my wife is a lot like that, which I, which I respect a lot. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to my son, he's more of this loyal, obedient, and wanting to, 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 to be within the, the right limits of the, the rules and stuff. So he, he's, and do they get on well with they get on with the grandparents? Do they see much of the grandparents? Yeah, we live near. We, we live close, so okay. so so we live in Emirates Hills. Both, both my my parents and uh, uh, and myself, uh, and then the other, my parent in laws are are in Frankfurt in Germany. So every summer, summer holidays they're in Germany, and then the, the rest of the time we're here, uh, and it's only two kilometers drive. Your dad built an empire over many, many years. And I think that there'd be an image of your dad as a businessman, and maybe not so much of an image as, as a grandfather. But I'm sure he's a, he's a lot of fun with the kids, isn't he? He is, he is, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's quite busy all the time, right? So when he's at home, he's still in his working mode. <laughs> and the kids are not very, uh, you know, they, they get a bit like nervous that, you know, he's maybe busy with his meeting, with his phone calls and stuff. So, but when he gets his moments, he becomes really, Childish with them, <laughs> so he he tries, and and I think I think for somebody who has not done it for so long, it, it starts to look a bit uh, strange, and, and and he 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 needs to practice much more, because the, all all his grandkids are still too young. Yeah, the oldest is my daughter. How many grandkids has he got? He got five. He's got five already. Yeah, There'll be more, won't there? There's yeah, going to be yeah, more for sure. There's seven kids. There's going to be yeah, more in yeah, time. Yeah, that's interesting. And do you think he'll ever retire? I think it's in his DNA uh, or is one of these He guys. says he wants to, but I think he will not. Not possible. It's, it's difficult for him to retire. And I think, I think his, 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 his bread and butter is work. He feels comfortable working. I think he, he should do that if, if, he, if he really enjoys it, right? So I know people who are very, 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 much, very old, but they still go to work every day just because he got into the habit. Mm. And I think he has that habit. Although he, he talks about retiring and doing this and doing that. But the things he says are things that he never really have done in the past. So then I, I'm like, I, I don't think you're going to pick up new habits yeah. and new hobbies at this age. How old is he now? He's 58. Okay. Yeah. So you've got this guy, he's a worker. It's like addicted, to, like being addicted to sugar, isn't it? Some people with their careers. It's like uh, he, they can't function he's, without it. Uh, he's, uh, He's a very interesting person. I, I learn a lot from him. He one of one of the biggest thing I, I I think he has, and a lot of people I see don't have it as much as he does. He has a lot of courage of taking his risk appetite is, is pretty good, and his calculations are pretty good. So he he doesn't he doesn't get 
you know, if I would have told him let's do skydiving today, he would be, he would be like, okay, <laughs> let's, 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 let's do it. Why not? He, he doesn't, he, he, he doesn't, what do I say? He doesn't contemplate a lot and, and, and complain that he, he's not wishy, wishy, wishy washy at all. He, he black, white, that's it. And I, I like that though. Yeah, he's, like he's always that. like that. He's not somebody who goes and talks a lot like myself. <laughs> <laughs> He's more like, you know, he's quiet and <laughs> introvert and um, and he does his uh, his thing. He he he's he's very um, fully introvert, I think. He's very quiet. He does a lot of thinking and less talking. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. I, I, I think I think that's something I, I, I appreciate actually. Now, you and I have uh, I had two episodes and this is the third episode yeah. of the podcast of the film first and of so all it's a different this time. very different yeah first one was kind of like formal second one was uh, out in your car looking at the sites as well wasn't it you remember we yes, had a yeah. look around there and then we caught up at the ex i was really impressed when i saw you at the what's it called what's the property exhibition called the where the, what's that property cityscape ex- cityscape when i saw yeah, you yeah. City, and your dad both there on the stand i was really impressed with that to see that the people that own the business were down sat there on the stand interacting with clients and brokers and stuff it was really cool i think, I think it's such a great event um, yeah it happens every year and but i just thought it because I, I i'd not seen that from developers sometimes they pop in the the, the ceos but to see you there and i was watching no we're there every year yeah, yeah it's good to see yeah and on the on this episode it was i really wanted to learn about you rather than you the businessman like that you the guy and so obviously tizzy and your pr guy and i had a chat on the phone and he's like what do you want to do and i'm like i don't know let's just think of ideas why don't we go sit with a sandwich on a park bench and get to know each other and he said yeah okay that's a good idea and then he sends me a message a couple of weeks ago and it's like right okay if i had wants to go skydiving he gave me the options <laughs> <laughs> so i i felt like i have to pick the most extreme <laughs> <laughs> no, but I am. I'm happy I did that. Does that mean that we've got? Uh, and I hope not, but I hope so. Can we have? Is the fourth episode going to be more extreme? <laughs> uh, he was proposing fishing. I think that's good too. Deep sea fishing early in the yeah. morning. That's a nice thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you do fishing? Do you like fishing? I haven't done much, but I could. It's a nice thing to do early yeah. in the morning. And then I, I suggested doing the zip line. That's a good idea as well. Okay, do stuff like that because yeah. Dubai has so much to offer, doesn't there's, there's it? There's so, so much. There's so much. much. And, and we as residents here, we sometimes for take it for granted or don't think about it a lot. And then we hear it from tourists who have oh. come here and they have done skydiving and zip lines and this and that. And, and, and it's not just Dubai, Ras Al Khaimah, Abu Dhabi. It's, it's a lot of the, the whole Emirates now has so much to offer. Have you seen the zip line in Ras Al Khaimah? No, I haven't. You out there? No, no. It's the longest zip line in the world and the fastest zip line in the world. Okay. And, and guess where I was this weekend though? Not not in Ras Al Khaimah, but in Abu Dhabi, in Sar Yas Bin Island. Uh, Sir Bani Yasai. Sir Bani Yasai. Yes. Yeah, that's where the animals are. The animals. <laughs> I, 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 it's not like anywhere, anywhere else stunning, like yeah. Emirates. It's like there's, there's, there's animals all over. Halfway and, to Saudi. Yeah, yeah, it's halfway to Saudi. Is, but, yeah. but, but, but when it comes to the UAE and seeing how many activities are available, I was, it's like being half, it's like being in Maldives and also on a safari in Africa. Wow. Yeah, it's just like that. Totally. Isn't it funny how we live in these places and we just don't get stuck in and we don't get involved? We get into... It's 344 kilometers away. But you can go by the seaplane. No, I, w- I drove. You but drove? Then, but then when you reach Abu Dhabi, the highway is 160 kilometers per hour. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like, the, like to... it was the German Autobahn, <laughs> uh, sort of. You you drive, you get there very, very quick. quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if, if you look how much is available and I'm glad we, we're meeting in a place like this. This is one of the really cool thing that's happening in Dubai is there's a lot that the people you know living in Dubai sometimes they they just get so caught up with their work and they forget that how much how many activities are there for kids or grown-ups or for everybody else sports wise or cultural I think a lot of people come here on vacation and want to buy property they want to buy like a a pied-a-terre or they want to buy um, somewhere think about coming to live here and stuff and I think that they've been seduced by Dubai in such a fabulous way by all the stuff that's out there on the media that exactly. they see that. I just think a lot of the time we just lot, get back. You know, the, the, and that's the, like because they, they see all this, we had people that were tourists, they, they fall in love with the city and then they book a home, they buy a home just as a, as a home for visiting. It's because they think they will yeah. visit so often. So they buy an apartment instead or, 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 or a property, furnish yeah. it, and then it's, you know, they, they would use it again. And again. So they, 
they have it's it's usually their second or third visit and they're so excited they put down their credit card down payment and they look book me a property maybe with all the developments that you sell when you sell them off plan maybe you should throw in a free skydive yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wonder how many takers you'd get on that <laughs> You get, it's a good the, idea. You, get, you get the keys and you get a skydive. <laughs> it's hey, a great facility, not? though, isn't it? I mean, look around here. These guys that are packing up these these um, parachutes over and over and like, doing such a fantastic job. And it looks such a complicated thing to do as well, doesn't it? But um, I'm betting we've got to rely. Every, we are relying completely, completely on what. I, what I'm these hoping guys they, are. They, they they would they would uh, put us on one that's the best and the <laughs> nicest and the biggest. I, mean, I, mean, I, will, I hope they're all the best. But um, yeah, it's, they have they have an incredibly good safety record here as well. Yeah. So. No, I I know I know I know a lot of people have been skydiving in this facility and phenomenal. And the, 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 the the records are very good. But what's more interesting, and you can see it on the screen there, is the view of the palm. We have a project there, so I could see my project. Mega, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See down on the palm like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that video is a bit old actually because a lot of the development's not done. Have you got a, a, a building on? The yeah, park? we have two. Two? Yeah, one is delivered, the other is being delivered in uh, March. On the Crescent? On the Crescent, yes. Oh, on the on the Crescent, on the Anantara side in the Waldorf Astoria, that, between those two. So is it apartments, hotel? What is it? It's hotel apartments. Hotel apartments. So it's apartments though. You live like a normal resident and you can have one, you can buy it. So it's not, it's not really a hotel where it's a hotel room. It's People a, must have amazing views living yes, there. Yes, they have. They have the beach access. Um, they have the, the sea view and they have the, the, the beach access and the beach view. So it's pretty wow. cool. Really cool. And it's named yeah. after my daughter, Mina. Is it? Yeah. Oh, how lovely is that? Yeah, that was my dad's idea. That's really lovely. Yeah. Right. Should we get this done? I'm ready. Right. We'll see you up there. Ah! <laughs>
and it was it was pretty good. But I, I did control it, and uh, I, I and we had a we had a we had something he was calling the the, the zero gravity thing as well. So we did that a couple of times. That was pretty good. Where you felt like okay, there was no he stopped gravity. you. Yeah, yeah he, he stopped. And you literally stopped in yes, the air. Yes, you stopped in the air. That was pretty good. Where yeah, it was good. Yeah. I, I I had a look at the whole Dubai. <laughs> See our projects there on, on the palm. Oh, the Mina project. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was like, that's our project there. And the Furjan was visible. The whole, the whole city yeah. pretty much very visible. Oh, the view is amazing, the isn't it? The view is amazing. Yeah. The, what and you can and see from up there on a clear day like the, we did The there. marina looks so amazing, so beautiful. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very... There's, there's so much, I was, as, I was, I was, as I was coming down, I was noticing that so much has been built. So much, so many of these beautiful towers. You look yeah. at the marina, you look at the palm, and then you can see the Burj Khalifa. I was looking at the whole city. I mean, being in real estate, my, my eyes are very attached to buildings and properties yeah. in real estate. So I, I, was, I was looking at all that and thinking, wow, there's a lot of work that has happened in the city. An amazing view. I mean, yeah, great from coming up there. Did you, have you called your wife yet to tell her you've done it? No. <laughs> She, she just texted me, she said, where, where, where are, are you? you? <laughs> Why aren't you checking your WhatsApp? <laughs> so I, I, I told her it's a long story. <laughs> Let me come back and I'll tell you. I didn't tell her yet. And so as we had somebody else with us, Tizian, who yeah. works with you. Now, was it, was it a, a punishment or was it a reward <laughs> to come and do a skydive today? I think, I think it, was, it, was a mix, it was a mix of both, but at the end, I'm sure he, he's very happy with the experience. It was my first time and I, I, I wanted somebody else to, to come on board. So, he, so I, I, I was open to having more of our team colleagues come and, and, and join. But Imagine doing incentives like that at work, though, for people that do well at it and give yeah, them a but, but then the question is, is this a punishment or is this... <laughs> a, like, like it's, when you do it, it's really amazing. It's really nice. But the, but that time where the the weeks or the days ahead you're thinking about it, it's yeah. a lot of a lot of worries, especially if it's your first time. Yeah. I think for my next time I'll be fully only excited about it. But it's it's the worry of the the unknown. Will I die? It's the unknown. Yeah, it's the unknown. Will I die? What will happen? What if things don't? What if things go wrong? What if that? What if that? It's the what ifs. And these guys, these guys are doing these jumps eight or nine yeah. times a day, and it's just like. It's like, it's like walking into the office and so getting my, Yeah, my instructor was like, welcome to my office when we're in yeah. there. <laughs> he's like, this is where I... And basically, ten, he said, I do 10 to 12 jumps a day. Crazy. Every day. Every single day. Every That's day. your life. It's funny, isn't it? So, just before we finish, first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to come and do this with you and share some time with you and get to I'm know well you better. Well, we did it. Okay, so it's been good fun. Every time I meet you, I enjoy your company. So thank you for that. But also, when it comes to looking forward as we go through into 2020 and look what is going on with you and your planning for the rest of the year, do, do as easy customers have good things to look forward to? Is there optimism it's, in the air? We, we are very optimistic. We, we are very, actually internally, we are very busy with delivering the projects that have been sold back in 2018 and 19 and 17 those are now at completion stages so 20 and 21 extremely busy with deliveries deliveries just last week we had one building delivered in Forjan this month we have another every month of this year there is a delivery of one or two buildings so that's that's how many buildings are being delivered Fantastic. and and those are properties that were sold in the back uh, back back, back a, few, a few a couple of years back you know some one some two years what's happening with new projects is we are more we, we're more cautious as into launching projects where the demand is, is there for and we, we avoid launching you know a lot of luxurious properties and all that we, we're focusing more on uh, the right location is it have does it have the right returns right mm. sizes it is that are more developed so yeah definitely focus on uh, maidan focus on al uh healthcare city those three areas are, are our pretty big focus and i think um, uh, we expo 2020 is gonna uh, uh, bring a lot of uh, visitors here, obviously 25 million visitors expected. Excitement and enthusiasm a lot and of positivity, excitement. yeah. I mean, we, we, we are very realistic. We know the dollar is strong, doesn't help. We know the, the, the whole, sometimes, the, 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 I mean, the, 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 the oil price doesn't help. Uh, the, uh, some of the regional talks about, the, those things don't really help. So like, like if you look at, and also the oversupply, there's a lot of talk about the oversupply, the sentiments, those things are really, not helpful to the real estate market but then we've been here for last now it's been 22 years we've always seen 
it's it's a very it's now it's a very mature city mm. so it goes through it's a very natural um, ups and downs ups and downs and mm. I think um, by by this summer when when the, when all those visitors and the expo is going to be very close by I think it's going to be uh, bouncing back mm. it's it's already been a good January for us and a good February so far so so we're pretty optimistic we're pretty excited I'm much more excited on the delivery parts I love delivering homes. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, I really appreciate it. There you go, we get a chance to see behind the scenes a little bit about people that run big businesses and in particular Farhad here, running a huge organisation now. But he's just like you and me, isn't he? He's a guy, a bit of an adrenaline junkie, likes to have a bit of fun, family guy, does the same things a lot of us do. Do you know what, and when we, came, when we got out of the air, landed on the ground and we got the shoots off, he said to me, why don't we do more of this? Why don't we make more time for work and less time to be happy? And I think this gives us a great understanding that we're all the same, really. He's no different. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed what we've done today. OK, got a bit of an idea. And if you're scared of skydiving, I urge you to try it. And if you want to get to know Farhad better, then I'm sure the door is open and you can do that very easily. Thanks a lot, mate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for your time. OK. <laughs> So I'm so lucky, aren't I? Well, look at my job, okay, look what I get a chance to do. I get out, okay, do podcasts, and I do podcasts when I'm skydiving as well. This has really been something I'll cherish. And for all of you out there that want to come on my show, think about something cool to do, okay? We've done a skydive, I'll do anything dangerous, anything with adrenaline, think of something cool to do, and maybe we can have some fun. But getting a chance to learn about Farhad today was really important. Um, understand what he, what he is really as a guy, you know, just like regular guy like you and me. And so that was really important too. And I really want you to think about what you've learned from this episode and think about the, the, the fact that sometimes we have an idea in our mind that people aren't approachable or people that are in senior positions or do very well for themselves aren't necessarily people we can access. And they are, and you can. But if you enjoyed this episode, then click over here and you'll be able to see more episodes of the podcast. But if you want to subscribe, which I'd love you to do, click over there, subscribe to the podcast, press the bell button and you'll see every episode coming through to you. More stuff like this. And considering this is the first time I've done a podcast skydiving, I promise you there'll be more.